I greet everyone, the peace of the Lord Jesus. Oh, we will open up the Bible, the Word of the Lord, the New Testament, Gospel of Luke, Luke 15. We're going to open up our Bibles in the book of Luke, chapter 15. Verse 18. It's a well-known text of the, ch of the church. The Bible says the following. I will arise and go to my father. The church may be seated. May God bless the explanation of his word. The text that we just read is a text that is very well known of every one of us because it speaks of the parable of the son, prodigio son. And everyone of us know that the Lord Jesus in his ministry is such a short ministry here on earth he used he used to speak to men many times through a parable and a parable is nothing more than a story but in it the brethren will notice it's contained a spiritual truth, a teaching, I would say, wonderful teaching from the part of God towards man's life. And in this parable, we're going to observe we're going to be two things. Firstly, the mistaken decision that one son made and later on after he took knowledge of the decision he had made he now makes a decision which is a correct decision and what does the Bible tell us a certain father had two children and soon, the younger, the youngest of the children, uh, spoke to the father and made what you're not supposed to do when the father is still alive. He said, Father, give me the part of the farm that belongs to me. I know and you know that someone only receives their part on the inheritance when somebody dies. I'm going to say it very clear. When somebody died, departed. When that son made this decision of going to his father and asking his part on, on the farm, he was saying, my father, for me, he is dead. Like if you are saying, I don't need him anymore. I don't want to live under his care. I don't want to sit down at his table eating of his bread, be having his protection and see his security, having his care. And all of us know here, I'm going to say in the two meanings, that it's a bad deal is when the son leaves the house of his father. I wish, I wish I still had my father 
How many of you that don't have their fathers anymore? In spite of my father being a uh, man very serious, but he was a person that uh, with whom we would sit down and have a conversation. How many of you don't have your f father anymore? Uh, how many of you are doing the same thing, thinking that you don't need your father anymore? Because you only give worth many times when you have lost it. And I always illustrate the qu the topic of loss with an experience that I've I was experienced when I was in the first church that I was a pastor of. There I had one of the best deacons I've ever had in my th 30 years of ministry. And he had a teenager uh, daughter and he looked to me and said to the pastor, Pastor, put my life in the group of intercession and pray for me in order to give my, uh, me a direction you know, regarding my daughter. And I said, perfectly. And that was the, ad the action of a father that loved his daughter. And we brought him in to the group of intercession and the, the Lord gave me uh, an instruction so that this father for seven nights early dawn in early dawn he would enter into her bedroom and pray for her with laying of hands upon her and he did seven days that the Lord has instructed him because he was a father and a father loves his son his child the father wants the best for his child in the same way God as being our father he has the best for us blessed be the name of the Lord for this and it happened that this father that I mentioned here in this with this testimony he uh, uh, was he ended up uh, dying suddenly and on the day uh, that preceded his his day of uh, departure the service and uh, I saw that young girl uh, entering to the church being cared crying out my father my father why didn't I enjoy the time that you were here with me oh my father how much you will be missed my brethren we need to give worth to the things when we have them this child said give my give me my part he said my father for me is dead and this father could say obviously he could say no you want to ask your part on the inheritance uh, consider me as dead no so here is the illustration of free will. You want it, you'll have it. And the Bible says that he divided with uh, his children the farm. And a few days later, the Bible's this is in the Bible, this expression. The younger man, younger child gathered everything. And as if he was saying, I have everything that is worth now I'm going to depart for a land that is far away from the house of my father the farther the better everything that I need I have the part of the inheritance what is the values material goods and man forgets pay attention that whatever he earned from God all the material things that you inherit from God when you uh, walk away from God those things are stolen from you I'm not going to enter into this detail but remember of the parable of the Good Samaritan the man that was coming down from Jerusalem to Jericho everybody and uh, has stuff everything stolen from him this man going to a faraway land fruit of the decision he made 
And there, the Bible says, he wasted uh, his form living recklessly. And after s spending everything, and the brother know, knows, whatever, you, whenever you just take take from something, it will end up ru running out of. And as for as long as he had, do you think that he remember his father? Yes or not? No. And while he still had um, possessions, he didn't remember his father. And on that land, the Bible says, there was a great famine. And he, when he was leaving the house of his father, he was not used to those things. The Bible says, he became to um, experience um, want. And I'm going to say things here in the name of Jesus. Look at what the psalmist said. I never saw a just and his descendants to beg for bread. Whoever is in the house of the Father, he is at God's feet that has pleasure that God govern his life. This person, his descendants, who never perish, uh, who never go wanting. And he, the person who had everything, now had nothing. And I would like to highlight this. It was the fruit of a wrong decision. The Bible says that he went to uh, the people that was in that land. They sent him to um, take care of the pig. And he was so hungry that he wanted to eat of the food that was given to the pigs. The Bible says clearly, nobody would give him anything. This is the illustration of the world that is out there. Nobody will give you anything. Now, away from the Father, huh? he spent everything. He's now uh, in difficulty, hungry. Now he remembers of what he had left behind. And he says, look. And he said, how many works of my father have abundance of bread? I'm here, perishing of hunger. And my brethren, on this uh, aspect, there are two paths to man. The path that he took was the decision, was the wrong decision. So now, the path that will lead to, to re his return is the right decision. It is the same thing with us. You, you failed in the presence of the Lord. Now you need to go to his feet and that's that's the truth and the Bible says he, he took an action I'll get up and I'll be with my father so then it was the correct decision I'll get up and I'm gonna go to my father I'm gonna tell father I sin against heaven and against you I'm no longer worthy of being called your son because of what I have done, because of my decision, my wrong decision. But you know what? Father, make me as one of your workers, because they have everything. They have ab abundance of bread, they have everything. And the Bible tells us that when he got up, he went to the Father, and now, um, you are create this anxiety. He was thinking, "Will the Father receive me? Will He uh, not um, tell me? Oh, I told you so. Who told you to leave uh, this place to the, the house of your father and consider me as dead? What do you think? That, do you think that the Father was going to do this? No." God is not like man. 
And I'll tell you, our God is a God of mercy, of love, that will not show back to us, point us, point to us our flaws and our sins, but much on the contrary, will gather us. He will embrace us. He will give us comfort. He will embrace us. Because God, God is love. And the Bible says that as he got up, he went to his father. And while he was still afar, he saw his father. And here, the illustration of the Lord. And his father was moved with great compassion. There, there was the desire of the father to receive his son back. And as he was running, hastily, he jumped to his uh, neck and kissed him. My bread, only the Lord can embrace us when we make the wrong decisions. Only the Lord is able to embrace us when we make some decisions that we're not supposed to. We do things, some things that we're not supposed to. And when the son, when the father received that son, he wants, he wants to do what he had planned. Father, I sinned against you, against heaven, against you. I am no longer worthy. No, now the question is of being considered worthy, worthy of being called your son. And the father could have said, "Yeah." That's right. You now are going to be one of my workers. But the father didn't say that. The son said that. And do you know what the father did? He said to the servants, Bring hastily the best robes. And he dressed him up. Put a ring on his hand. And a sandal on his feet. Bring a calf and kill it. And so let us eat and celebrate. Let us rejoice. You know why? Because this son, that made a wrong decision, he was dead. But when he got up, he came back to my house, to my presence. He made the right decision. This son that was dead, he is now alive. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So now let us come to the end of this short message that you already know. Making decisions, we are... We are here for in this life. Every day we make decisions. Our choices. When you look from you towards me, you see a person that fails, that makes mistakes, that can make a, a wrong choice and a r right choice. When I look from my point of view to you, I could say, Dito. But remember, I have a God that is our Father that can take care of us, that can stay with His hand upon us and can bless us, that wants to bless us. I was at one church by invitation on a birthday and there the spiritual gifts were given for the service. Um, and they instructed me to give this message, same message. And at the end of the service, a mother came to me and said, Look, it seems like you came here just to speak to me, just with me. Look, I even believe that the Lord has moved it because God does this by love. He moved the entire church in order to speak to a single heart because it is uh, about God's economy. And she was saying, I live in this. My son left the house of the father. And when he left, he went through a very difficult moment. Got involved with a very serious difficulty. And now 
the father and I, we have to give him assistance. So my brethren, that's the message. There's no better place than to be in the house of the father. There's no better thing than to be the Lord our God to be taking care of our lives. So now let's sing. Let us sing this song. Find the church to stand up. The Lord has shown that there it is today with us, a uh, young lady. She came to the service uh, asking the Lord for a direction, some instruction for her life. The Lord is saying that it's, that's not the moment. The time is for you to seek an experience, intimate experience with Him. And tonight, it is desired the Lord to give you your youth. This experience of intimacy, the Bible says that the intimacy of the Lord is for those who fear Him and seek Him. I have been speaking for a group of people in the place where I work, that what God has for us, nobody will take it away. Amen? To be in God's project, if there is in the project of God something for you in any aspect of your life, if it is, nobody will rob it from you. The Lord also operated a blessing of deliverance in the life of the church tonight, of renewal. And we need this, the blessing of the Lord. Because the word says, the blessing of the Lord enriches. And it also does something else. And it not, it not adds pain. Nobody can say, oh, I'm, I'm sick because I'm filled with blessings. No, no, no. Serving the Lord is the greatest joy of the servant of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to have a word of glorification to the name of the Lord. Amen. 
We thank you, Lord, because you have sustained us. We praise the Lord. We thank you for everything. We're glorified. invite everyone that desire and I will kneel down I invite everyone to kneel down we are in the house of the Father in the presence of the Father this is a moment now in which you place your life in the presence of the Lord Lord I'm here I'm a servant I'm, a, I'm uh, your son and your daughter we're here Lord dependent on you I know how good it is to be in your house because it is in your house where I found refreshing and I found comfort it is in your house that you bring us encouragement so we can continue in this wonderful path on the instrument playing. The Lord said the glorification of the church that is going to operate deliverance, renewal. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Glory be given to the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, here's your people prostrated in your presence. Lord, each one of us is placing himself in and herself in your presence and say, we are saying how good it is to be in, in the house of our Father, to having you taking care of us, to protect us, to fight our battles. And we are our victorious people when we are at your feet. That's why we say, bless your people, bless your church, and give victories to your people. We pray to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be resting upon us, my brethren, now and until the arrival of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Church, may be seated. If somebody needs a prayer, specifically for another topic, the deacons and ushers are here at your disposal. Just raise one of your hands. Tomorrow we have Sunday school at 10.30 in the morning. Mark is saying that uh, tomorrow 
from tonight to, to, to tomorrow will be um, at the end of uh, summertime. We're going to gain an hour. Pastor Sabado, the lady with the uh, baby. Thank you. 